Hello, welcome to the channel. I'm Dom Mecca. In today's video, we're going to be checking out String Theory Explained. What is the true nature of reality? It's a video by Corker's Arts, one of my favorite channels. Go check them out if you haven't yet. And we're going to get right into the video. But before that, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more fascinating videos like this. Let's get right into it. What is the true nature of the universe? To answer this question, humans come up with stories to describe the world. We t mm, religions, okay. test our stories and learn what to keep and what to throw away. But the more we learn, the more... Is science also part of these stories? ...complicated and weird our stories become. Some of them so much so that it's really hard to know what they're actually about. Like <laughs> string theory. <laughs> string theory. A famous, controversial, and often misunderstood story about the nature of everything. Why did we come up with it? And is it correct or just an idea we should chuck out? Hmm. Let me know in the comments what you think before you even get into the explanation. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 Corker's Arts. To understand the true nature of reality, we looked at things up close and were amazed. Wondrous right. landscapes in the dust. Ain't that crazy? The whole universe that exists at the microscopic level. Zoos of bizarre creatures. Complex protein robots. All of them made from structures of molecules made up of countless, even smaller things, atoms. We Ooh. thought they were the final layer of reality until we smashed them together really hard and discovered things that can't be divided anymore. Or elementary particles. Oh. But now we had a problem. They're so small that we could no longer look at them. Think about it. What is seeing? To see something, we need light, an electromagnetic wave. This wave hits the surface of the thing and gets reflected back from it into your eye. Mm -hmm. The wave carries information from the object that your brain uses to create an image. So you can't see something without somehow interacting with it. And that interaction causes an interference. Seeing is touching, an active process, not a passive one. This is not a problem with most things. But particles are very, very, very small. So small that the electromagnetic waves we use to see are too big to touch them. Visible light just passes over them. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> Visible light just passes over them. This is the scales we're dealing with. We can try to solve this by creating electromagnetic waves with more and much smaller wavelengths. But in quantum physics, shorter wavelengths means more energy. So when we touch a particle mm. with a wave that has a lot of energy, it gets a kick. Whoa. Damn. By looking at a particle, we change it. In quantum physics, we cannot know where a particle is and where it's going with absolute precision. This fact is so important that it has a name. The Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, the basis of all quantum physics. So what does a particle look like then? Isn't it insane how there is no certainty? It's literally uncertainty is baked into the equation. <laughs> like, wow. What is its nature? We don't know. If we look really hard, we can see a blurry sphere of influence, but not the particles themselves. We just know they exist. But if that's the case, how can we do any science with them? We did what humans do and invented a new story, a mathematical fiction. The story of the point particle. Mm, called it a mathematical fiction. <laughs> we decided that we would pretend that a particle is a point in space. Any electron is a point with a certain electric charge and a certain mass, all indistinguishable from each other. This way, physicists could define them and calculate all of their interactions. This can be made precise in quantum field theory, and this solved a lot of problems. All of the standard model of particle physics is built on it, and it predicts... Doesn't that kind of pull back the curtain and give you a peek behind all the general ideas? 
and thoughts that most people have about this particular subject where Coker's Arts is just being real and explaining the true nature of things and then explaining how we quantify it into the maths and make it simpler to understand, but it's just a fuzzy sphere of influence is what they called it. Very fascinating. Lots of things very well. Some quantum properties of the electron, for example, have been tested and are accurate up to 0.0000000000002%. So while particles are not really points, by treating them as if they were, we get a pretty good picture of the universe. Not only did this idea advance science, it also led to a lot of real-world technology we use every day. But there's a huge problem, gravity. In quantum mechanics, all physical forces are carried by certain particles. But according to Einstein's general relativity, gravity is not a force like the others in the universe. If the universe is a play, particles are the actors, but gravity is the stage. To put it simply, gravity is a theory of geometry, the geometry of space-time itself, of distances which we need to describe with absolute precision. Gravity, just the warping of time, warping of space. I mean, I mentioned this in another video, but picture light thinks it's going straight, but it's being warped into a curve when it's around massive bodies with huge gravitational forces. You could be traveling in a straight path, but <laughs> gravity is making you go in a circle. <laughs> But since there is no way to precisely measure things in the... But it's not even really pulling on you. It's just that space time itself is curved. Very, very, very interesting insight into the universe. Quantum world, our story of gravity doesn't work with our story of quantum physics. When physicists tried to add gravity to the story by inventing a new particle, their mathematics broke down. And this is a big wow. problem. If we could marry gravity to quantum physics and the standard model, we would have the theory of everything. Ooh, it's like having the ring, the ring of power. So very smart people came up with a new story. They asked, what is more complex than a point? A line or a string? String theory was born. What makes string theory so elegant is that it describes many different elementary particles as different modes of vibration of the string. Just like a violin string vibrating differently can give you a lot of different notes, a string can give you different particles. Mm. Most importantly, this includes gravity. Wow, so the concept is changing it from a point-like to a string-like <laughs> particle. Interesting. String theory promised to unify all fundamental forces of the universe. This caused enormous excitement and hype. String theory quickly graduated to a possible theory of everything. Unfortunately, string theory comes with a lot of strings attached. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Much of the maths involving a consistent string theory does not work in our universe with its three spatial and one temporal dimensions. String theory requires 10 dimensions to work. So it requires making things even much more and more complicated instead of like breaking it down to the simplest essence of the universe in existence. When things are required to become more complicated, does that mean you're moving away from its core understanding more? Or is just that is reality by nature? What do you guys think? Look out. So string theorists did calculations in model universes and then try to get rid of the six additional dimensions and describe our own universe. But so far, nobody has succeeded and no prediction of string theory has been proven in an experiment. So string theory did not reveal the nature of our universe. One could argue Boo. that in this case, string theory really isn't useful at all. Science is all about experiments and predictions. If we can't do those, why should we bother with strings? It really is true, true, <laughs> like that is facts. I mean, you could make up any theory, any idea, and it could be loosely based on mathematical equations and ideas and concepts. But if it's not something that could be actually tested and verified and beyond that, beyond that, actually provide predictions, new predictions that you would not have had Otherwise, what's the utility in it? It's basically embarking in imagination, really, right? It's all about how we use it. Physics is based on maths. 
2 plus 2 makes 4. Mm -hmm. This is true no matter how you feel about it. And the maths in string theory does work out. That's why string theory is still useful. Imagine oh, Cocker's Eye says it's still useful. Okay. Imagine that you want to build a cruise ship, but you only have blueprints for a small rowing boat. Mm. There are plenty of differences. The engine, the materials, the scale. Sure. But both things are fundamentally the same, things that float. So by studying the rowing boat blueprints, you might still learn something about how to build a cruise ship eventually. With string sure. theory, we can try to answer some questions about quantum gravity that have been puzzling physicists for decades, such as how black holes work or the information paradox. String theory may point us in the right direction. When used in this spirit, string theory becomes a precious tool for theoretical physicists and help them discover new aspects of the quantum world and... Okay, so basically... It's a building block on our path to gaining the theory of everything. Okay. Some beautiful mathematics. So maybe the story of string theory is not the theory of everything. But just like the story of the point particle, it may be an extremely useful story. We don't yet know what the true nature of reality is, but we'll keep coming up with stories to try and find out until one day, hopefully, we do know. This video... I'm very excited for that day. I'm very, very excited for that day where we have the theory of everything. Someone, some genius, maybe you guys, one of you guys in the audience, figures it out and breaks through this problem between general relativity and quantum physics. Finding that bridge, finding and understanding quantum gravity and how it works. Wow, that's the new frontier. But if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments if you have any other videos you would recommend me to go check out. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like and show your support. Subscribe for more and I'll get to more videos. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you and see you in the next one. Don Mecca out.